All right, I've got some good news and some bad news. I just watched WrestleMania 11 and 12 back to back, and the good news is I'm really excited to talk about WrestleMania 12. The bad news is, first we have to talk about WrestleMania 11. <laughs> Freddy Krueger saying hi! WrestleMania 11, April 2nd, 1995 in the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut. My hometown. Born and raised in Connecticut. I didn't live in Connecticut in 1995. I don't know if I've mentioned this on WrestleMania Wednesday, but at some point, I think late 89, my family moved to Switzerland because my father got a job at a Swiss company. So, uh, we didn't live in Connecticut, which is a shame. I used to go to wrestling events all the time. I've been to the Hartford Civic Center in particular more times than I can remember. Uh, WWE is actually based out of Connecticut, uh, just a few hours from Hartford. So we got a lot of shows, probably higher caliber shows than a, a, a city like Hartford deserved. But unfortunately, I didn't go to this one. If I had lived in Connecticut at the time, I probably would have gone to it. But I didn't miss much. <laughs> this was not a great WrestleMania. Not the worst. This one was more forgettable than it was bad. Speaking of Hartford, Connecticut, it's been maybe a week or so, as I should mention, the passing of Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe, who did probably his best work for Detroit, but I, when I was a kid, he was a Hartford Whaler. That was our hockey team. It's no there. It's not there anymore. Now it's uh, it, it's moved to the Carolina Hurricanes a couple decades ago. But when I was a kid, Hartford Whalers is where it's at. And uh, Gordy Howe lived in my hometown of Glassmere, Connecticut. And I, I used to see him from time to time. You would see him at the grocery store or whatever. He had a restaurant called Gordy's. It, it didn't last that long, but we used to eat there because we loved Gordy Howe. But he uh, recently passed away, and I, just, I figured I would mention that. Rest in peace, Gordy Howe. A man who I saw many times at the Harper Civic Center. We opened with a tag team match, Lex Luger and the British Bulldog versus Jacob and Eli Blue. Next to their name, I wrote down a question mark. I don't remember if I wrote down the question mark because I'm not sure if that's their name, or just because I don't remember them at all. Either way, this match was boring. Lex Luger and the British Bulldog won, and the commentary was really weird because Vince went over the top talking about what a great team they were and how he's sure that we're going to see them uh, many times in the future and that how this team is just going to be the biggest tag team in WWE history, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember ever seeing them again. Next up was for the Intercontinental title. It was champion Jeff Jarrett with the roadie versus Razor Ramon with the one, two, three kid. This one was all right, this one was pretty fun. It was too long and it kind of got boring, but these are two really good wrestlers, Razor Ramon, Jeff Jarrett. He was both like a, a I guess an evil country singer uh, who was accompanied to the ring by his roadie who later went on to great fame and fortune as the road dog, great wrestler. Razor Ramon won by a disqualification, so he did not get the title. Next up was The Undertaker versus King Kong Bundy. Remember King Kong Bundy? I don't think we've seen him since WrestleMania 3, WrestleMania 4. When did he fight the Midgets? Obviously, The Undertaker wins. The streak continues. He's now 4-0. This match was fine. It was fun. It was pretty fun seeing The Undertaker versus King Kong Bundy. But, you know, not a great match, but a fun match. And fun goes a long way. Then we had the tag team title match. Owen Hart and his mystery partner <laughs> challenging the champions, Billy and Bart, the smoking guns. The mystery partner of Owen Hart was revealed to be Yokozuna, <laughs> which was hilarious. Not a great match, but it was a lot of fun. Owen Hart is always great. Yokozuna, still a pretty good performer. And the smoking guns... We're fine. Owen Hart and Yokozuna prevailed to become the new tag team champions. It's a fun team. Next up was a submission match with special referee Roddy Piper. It was Bret Hart 
versus Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund may have been involved in this because he also lived in Connecticut. He also lived in my hometown of Glastonbury. So we had Gordy Howe and Bob Backlund. <laughs> Bob Backlund was the was my brother's wrestling coach for a little bit at his high school. Anyway, this match was okay. It wasn't great. I expected more. I expected this match to be amazing because Bob Backlund, legend, Bret Hart, my all-time favorite wrestler. But it was, I don't know, the chemistry wasn't there or something was off. This was in Bob Backlund's uh, heel period where he was um, Mr. Bob Backlund. He was evil, which never really worked for me. Maybe just because I knew him so well as uh, the hero before Hulk Hogan. So I just, his heel turn never sat right with me. But that's okay. It was, it was an okay match, but it, not, not one for the books. There's one for this book, my, my WrestleMania notebook. And that brings us to the semi-main event. This is for the heavyweight title. The main event, well, we'll get to that, but the, it's kind of weird that the heavyweight title was for the, the semi-main event. But it was champion Diesel defending against Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was accompanied to the ring by Jenny McCarthy and Psycho Sid. Diesel was accompanied to the ring by Pamela Anderson. This was this it was the best match of the night for sure, but nowhere near the best match of Shawn Michaels' WrestleMania career. But it was this may have been Diesel's best match of all time. This was a it was a pretty solid match. They both did really well, but uh, not it's not gonna make my WrestleMania top ten, but it might make my WrestleMania top fifty. So Diesel retains the title. And he leaves the, the ring with Jenny McCarthy and Pamela Anderson. And then that brings us to the main event, which is kind of a weird one, especially taken out of context, because I, I, I didn't watch the buildup. I wasn't really watching wrestling at this time. Bam Bam Bigelow versus football player Lawrence Taylor. LT. Weird. But a pretty solid match. LT was really good. For the most part, it was the Bam Bam Bigelow show. He carried him. He did all the, the most of the, the performance. But LT was pretty good. He, uh, he took a lot of bumps, which you don't really see celebrities do all that often, which is where they, uh, you know, they, they fall down, basically, which is not fun to do, and you can really hurt yourself. But LT really went for it. And he sold a lot, which is another thing that celebrity guest wrestlers don't always do, which is to say... He really made it look like Bam Bam was kicking the crap out of him. LT was really good. He was, he was as celebrity wrestlers go, I might pick LT as the best. Anyway, Lawrence Taylor wins. Obviously, you don't get a big star like Lawrence Taylor and have him lose in your main event at WrestleMania. But it was a pretty good match. Diesel Shawn Michaels was better just because they're both actually good wrestlers. But... Bam Bam's great, and Lawrence Taylor, he really tried, and he really put a lot of effort into it, and he was a, a, a pretty solid performer in the ring. I liked it. And that's WrestleMania 11. That was, is that the shortest WrestleMania ever? Certainly, it only took up about three pages, three, three and a half pages in my book. But anyway, it, was, it's, it seemed short, not that many matches, certainly not that many good matches. But not the worst, but I'm glad we're done talking about it because it was uh, boring. But anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Comment down below with your thoughts on WrestleMania 11, on LT, on Bam Bam Bigelow, on Bob Backland, Gordy Howe, Connecticut, or just wrestling in general. Thanks for watching and see you next Wednesday. I remember my brother had a poster of him in his room when he had his helmet off. Maybe he was shirtless. I'm not saying anything about my brother. And he was he was on the he was in front of like the field goal thing, whatever they call that in football, you know the, the thing. And he had a laser gun. And he was shooting a laser at it. And I remember thinking that was pretty cool, I guess. If 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 football players actually had laser guns, I would watch. But since they don't, I watch wrestling instead.